thank you. Okay, all righty, all right. Okay, um, only gram negative bacteria, they can transfer DNA from one cell to another. Only gram negative bacteria can transfer DNA from one cell to another. True or false? Uh, True or false? <clears throat> okay. We did say that only gram negative bacteria they have, pilus, so they can conjugate, right? So, the question is only gram negative bacteria can transfer DNA from one cell to another. Yes or no? False. False, false. Although we have not talked about those, but there are other methods by which bacteria transfer DNA. We have not talked about that, so I'm not going to ask you this question on the, the test. So other than conjugation, okay, there are other methods that bacteria use, both gram positive and negative, to transfer DNA. But this method is exclusively for gram negative bacteria. <clears throat> okay. Um, one more question, then we will move, move on to the new material. F negative is a gram negative bacterium, and F positive is a gram positive bacterium. Conjugation takes place between an gram negative, which is F negative, and an F positive, which is gram positive. True or false? Wait. One more time. Yeah. Conjugation takes place between an F negative bacterium, which is gram negative, and an F positive, which is gram positive. False. They both are gram negative. Both are gram negative. This is called F positive because it has plasmid. It has fertility. It has no fertility plasmid. But they both are negative bacteria. Okay. <clears throat> so no question on conjugation. All right. Let's move on to the third and final appendage. The first appendage was flagella. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I asked you to make a note. We started flagella. Gram positive and negative have flagella. Did you write that down or no? Okay. If not, write where we started. I think I don't know what's going on with this thing. Pointer is working. Nothing. I have to stand there. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Maybe the battery is. Yeah. Right where we started flagella. Okay. Right here. Please write down both gram positive and negative bacteria, they have flagella. Like only gram negative bacteria have pilus, but both gram positive and negative bacteria, they have flagella. flagella. Okay? Everything else is good, just one point. Yep. yep. Pardon me? Yep, sure. Both gram positive and negative bacteria, they have flagella. But make sure I, I did not say that all gram positive and all negative have flagella. Didn't say that, right? Yeah. Both have flagella. Both gram positive and negative, they have flagella. Okay. Plus is gram negative. Oh, is gram negative only, correct. The third appendage, okay, we are done with. The first appendage, flagella. Okay. Second, pilus. The third one is this one right here, this hair like projections right here. These are called fimbri. 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 All right. So let's go to fimbri. Shoot. Fimbri. Again, out of the three appendages, only one is tubular, the other two are non tubular. Okay, both 
flagella and fimbri, they are non-tubular structure. This is also made of protein, but there is no special name for this, this protein. Remember, flagella is made up of protein called flagellin, pilus, pilin. So third one is also protein, but no special name. So all three appendages are made up of protein. Okay? They are found on the surface of both gram-positive and negative. Function, they help bacteria attach to the host. For example, two examples that I have, Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay? No, the main function of this is not locomotion. They, no bacteria can use fimbri for locomotion purposes, although they look like cilia, okay? but they can never be used for locomotion movement. Their only function is attachment. Attachment. Okay, let me show you two examples right here. Neisseria gonorrhea and Streptococcus pyogenes. This is Streptococcus pyogenes right here, the red one. This is a bacterium when you have strep throat. Your throat, if you really have strep, strep throat, not sore throat, different thing. <coughs> strep throat, your throat really hurts bad, okay? And you have fever. Because this bacteria, this fuzz that you see right here, these are fimbri. That allows the bacteria to stick to the mucous membrane of your throat. And so your throat is rough. And then this bacteria releases a toxin that actually destroys your RBC that leads to the fever. Okay? So that's why the, when the doctors they do throat culture, that's what they are trying to find out, what type of strep you have in your throat, what type of hemolysis that's called, hemolysis is causing, blood destruction. If you really have strep throat, all the blood will be gone from the blood agar plate. If it will be crystal clear, you'll be able to write see through the dish. Then you need the antibiotic. We all have strep in our throat, but not this type, not the pathogenic type, non-pathogenic type. Okay? This is gonorrhea right here. Neisseria gonorrhea. Look at the length of the fimbri right here. Okay? That's how you can tell the difference between the two, strep and Neisseria gonorrhea. Remember Neisseria? Diplococci, okay. their fimbri are huge, long, and they, they help initiate, start the disease. Okay. A person who has gonorrhea, this will allow the bacteria to stick to the mucous membrane and initiate disease. Yep? No problem, sure. Orlando, please. His fault. Okay. Thank you very much. Better? Make it, make, maybe. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? This one, first one? Yeah. It's just a diagram. It's not a picture. It's just a diagram. So, but these are two actual pictures of Streptococcus pyogenes, and this one is Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea. Yeah. Now, this one looks like diplo, but it's not. Remember, it is strepto. Strep. Yeah, it just happens to be this way. But it is actually strepto. Strepto. How can I tell the difference? The size of the fimbri. Look at the size. Nicira gonorrhea has huge fimbri. Yep, David? Are we going to need to know the example? Yep. No need to know the example. And for that, you, <laughs> for, do you have the chart that I sent you? This has all the examples that are on your chart. My exams are very comprehensive. I'm sorry, I wish I could tell you don't skip, don't study this, don't study that, but it's comprehensive. Every little detail is on the test. All righty. All righty. Now let's move on to the cell envelope. Done with the appendages, the flagellum, the pilus, and the fimbri. Now we are going to talk about these three layers, three layers. The innermost that all living cells have, plasma membrane or cell membrane or cytoplasmic membrane. Second, duct, cell wall. Most bacteria have cell wall, not all. And then capsule, the one we talked about in the lab today. Okay, capsule. These three layers, they make up the envelope of the bacteria. All right? The envelope. First layer, the outermost layer, it's called the glycocalyx or the capsule. Same thing, different name, same thing, glycocalyx. Second, cell wall. Third, plasma membrane, cell membrane. Two are optional, number one and two are optional for to construct a 
living cell. The third one is mandatory. You can't have a cell without the cell membrane. Okay. Let's talk about the first one. What is, are you writing? Yes. You should not be. You should have the printed notes so I can move a little faster, please. Yeah, okay. You should always bring the printed notes so we can move a little faster, please, okay? It should not be broken if, if you print it correctly. Yeah, you should not be writing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have to finish everything. I cannot let you write each and every word. If you want everything, you have my notes on, online, and you can also watch the video, please. All right? Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Mucousy substance, okay, which is external to the bacterial cell, okay, made up of polysaccharide. Protein or glycoprotein, both. All right. So chemical composition, underline, you need to know the chemical composition of the, the capsule. Types, two major categories. You can classify capsules into two categories. One is called slime layer. The reason it's called slime layer, it is loosely organized, <clears throat> it's loosely attached. There's a bacterium. Bacterium, and then you have the capsule around it. <clears throat> like this. This is slime layer. Slime layer. Unorganized, loosely attached to the bacterium. Second type of capsule, which is called the true capsule. Bacterium. And it is firmly attached, very organized, and firmly attached to the capsule. Which one did you see this morning? Was it, yes. Yeah, Firmly, this one, this one, very organized, okay? This is the one that we saw, or some of you will see it this afternoon. This is called macro capsule or true capsule. Macro or true capsule. True, true capsule, okay? <clears throat> okay, fine. Third, it's so tiny that you cannot really see it under the microscope. The only microscope that will allow you to observe third type of capsule is electron microscope. It's called micro capsule. You cannot stain it. You cannot actually visualize it under any of the microscopes except electron microscope. But you can observe it. Uh, under light microscope, I mean under electron microscope, but if you want to see its presence, how do you do blood grouping? Okay, what is the principle of blood grouping? You put a drop of blood on the slide. So what's the principle behind, is it blood group A, antigen antibody, antigen antibody. So let's say if a bacterium has microcapsule, I'm going to draw it, but <clears throat> let's see. There's a bacterium, and here's a microcapsule on this bacterium right here. Remember, it's so tiny that you cannot accept for electron microscope. But if you want to reveal its presence, if you want to find out if the bacteria has it or not, what can you do? Remember, all biological entities, they have what on their surface? Antigens. Antigen. So this capsule is also, it has antigen on its surface. So if you have, let's say if this is a bacterium, XYZ. If you want to find out if this bacterium XYZ has microcapsule, how can you reveal? You don't have, how can I reveal it's present in the lab? That's it. Drop, put a drop of antibody to it, and if the anti, antigen is there, what will happen to the slide? 
agglutination, clumping. You will see clumping. That's how the blood grouping is done. So if antigen and antibody reaction take place, you can say this, this bacterium has a capsule. So its presence can be revealed by antibody antigen reaction. Antibody antigen reaction. Or a serological test, antibody antigen test. So if it clumps, you know there's a capsule? Very good, yeah. If it clumps, it means the capsule is present. No clumping, no capsule. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, so the serological method right here is antibody antigen reaction, serological reaction, antibody antigen reactions. Their presence may be revealed by serological tests, antibody antigen tests. Okay. Examples. All righty. Okay, per hello. I don't know why it's, okay. Number one. The medical significance of capsule, those bacteria that have capsule, they're more virulent, oops, more pathogenic, more disease causing. Why? Because capsule prevents them from phagocytosis. They cannot be destroyed. Now some of the example that I'm going to show you, okay, under the example, they are so bad that they can even destroy, they can kill the phagocytic cell. Okay. Second function is like fimbri. Fimbri, they help bacteria attach, right? They also help bacteria attach to the host because they are mucousy, gelatinous substance, okay? They also help bacteria attach to the host, okay? Now, because they are made up of what? Uh, chemical composition, okay. Protein, sugar, or combination of both. Those bacteria, okay, they have capsule when the conditions are unfavorable, they can eat their own capsule, number three. Can be used as a source of nutrition under adverse condition. Bacteria can use their own capsule as a source of nutrition. And finally, it also protects bacteria from drying, drying. Okay, now the examples. Streptococcus mutans. We all have this bacteria in our mouth. Okay, this is the normal flora of the mouth. Streptococcus mutans in the mouth. Some of us, question? Okay. Oh. So, uh, some of us, we like to eat a lot of sugar, a lot of sugar, but don't, do not necessarily brush our teeth, right? So this is what happens. People who don't like to brush their teeth. Teeth, and this bacterium is because of the mucus. This capsule sticks to the gum line. Okay, because of the, this mucusy gelatinous layer, this bacteria, it is Streptococcus mutans. Here's the capsule, the green, right here. Bacteria allows the bacter This capsule allows the bacteria to stick to the gum. And if you don't brush your teeth for a few days, some people, a few months, okay, really. So these bacteria, they turn sugar into acid. And acid eats up the enamel. And what do you have? Holy mouth. <laughs> Hole in your mouth. This is called dental caries. <laughs> dental caries. Dental care. Tooth decay. Tooth decay. So this bacteria may lead to tooth decay. <clears throat> Mutant. Yep. Streptococcus pyogenes. I just told you what does that cause? Strep throat. Streptococcus pyogenes causes strep throat. Okay. Now. When you have strep throat, doctors always tell you when you go home, gargle with salt water, right? And you will feel better. And you actually do for a little while. Yeah. If the, your doctor is not telling you, change your doctor. Okay. <laughs> now, it does work, actually. For a while, it does work. What's the principle behind it? Of course, you have to take antibiotic if you have strep throat. So why does when you gargle with 
salt water warm is better. Warm salt water. Why does it work if you feel relief for a little while? Why? Uh, doesn't kill. Uh, some of the bacteria will be flushed away. Okay, but remember, salt water. Okay, causes the bacteria to literally shrink because salt is hypertonic solution. So your bacteria will become metabolically inactive. They literally shrink, shrink, shrivel, and become metabolically inactive. Inactive. If you have any oral surgery done or something, your dentist will also tell you, go home and rinse with salt water. Because, okay, not only your cells, your epithelial cells, but the bacteria too, they both will become metabolically inactive for a while, and you'll feel relief. Okay, that's why. So the more frequently you will gargle, the better you will feel. <clears throat> okay. Klebsiella pneumonia, the bacteria that causes pneumonia. People who have pneumonia caused by this bacterium, okay, or there are some other bacteria that are also cause Streptococcus pneumoniae, they also have capsule. They have a hard time breathing, right? Why? Because this bacteria, it covers their alveoli. Alveoli. Mucousy gelatinous substance cover the alveoli and they cannot exchange air, properly breathing. And if you look at their sputum, the person who has pneumonia is very shiny, thick and shiny mucus because of the bacteria, capsulated bacteria. So, do I have another one? No? Okay, fine. <clears throat> Any question on capsule? Okay. Oh, one more thing. Okay. Capsules are because outermost layer. They are made under favorable growth conditions. Okay. It's like, let me ask you this. I, I don't like fur coats, but let's say a nice leather jacket. When do you think I'm going to buy a really nice leather jacket looking like? If I have extra money, right? Okay. If I have money, I'll buy it. So it's just like bacteria like that too. If they have extra food, they will put on this layer called capsule. Okay, but once I don't get my pay, where do you think that leather jacket is going to go to? Pawn shop, right? Really, <laughs> really, that's what bacteria do. They eat up their own capsule. So capsule is made under favorable growth condition. When there's plenty of food, an extra layer of clothing. Okay. <clears throat> So which culture is most likely to have capsule? Old culture or young culture? Young, young culture, young culture. Because young cultures, plenty of food. When the culture becomes old, less nutrients, more metabolic waste. So you are most likely to find what in the old culture? Very good. The endospore, opposite, endospore. Survival. Okay. The cardboard box, actually, yeah. Second layer is the cell wall. Let's go back, look at the picture. Okay. The cell wall. All bacteria except one, they have this, this layer. All bacteria except one, they have cell wall. And that bacterium that does not have a cell wall is called, what? Mycoplasma. Remember, please. It's going to show up for sure on your test. Mycoplasmas. Mycoplasma is a bacterium that does not have a cell wall. And secondly, this is the smallest bacterium known. This bacterium is the smallest one. Smallest bacterium known. Okay. <clears throat> Cell wall, I'll say maybe four to six questions for sure on the cell wall on your test. Four to six, yeah, four to six questions. Some are situational, some are just pure memorization, the composition, okay? So let's spend some time on the cell wall today, okay? Although there are only two points here, okay? okay you need to understand the com chemical composition, which I'm going to summarize for you. I'm going to go over two, at least two times, maybe three times, and then the functions. 
the main function of the cell wall is that it provides bacteria shape. And I think I might have mentioned, if not, you can write this down, that the shape of the bacteria, the part of the cell wall that provides shape is <coughs> peptidoglycan. This is the chemical in the cell wall that is responsible for the rigidity of the bacteria. Rigidity. Firmness of the bacteria. Okay? <clears throat> Also, those bacteria that have cell wall, it protects them from osmotic lysis, meaning rupture. When there's too much osmotic pressure, they will not burst. What type of cells will blow up in hypotonic environment? Mycoplasma, well, mycoplasma doesn't have a cell wall. Animal cells, your cheek cells, okay, your RBCs, put them in hypotonic solution, what happened? In hypo, all cells become hippo. I'll, I'll, I'll explain that to you. It's very easy. Hypo, hippo. They gain water and they blow up unless they have a cell wall. So it prevents osmotic lysis. When the pressure builds up, cells with cell wall will not rupture. Okay? So bacteria will not rupture most. What else will not rupture? Plant cells. Plant cells have a cell wall. They will not rupture. Okay? And they also it also protects the bacteria from osmotic collapse. Bacteria that have cell wall, they maintain their shape. Even after losing water, they maintain their shape. So these are the two important terminologies we are going to talk about. Come on, come on, move on. Okay. Yikes. All right. The difference between gram-positive cell wall and negative cell wall. <clears throat> You're going to go to the diagram. Okay, here's gram positive cell wall. Not going to ask you the concentration. I told you before when we were talking about um, gram stain that gram positive bacteria they have more peptidoglycan, right? Okay, so just you can replace this with more. More peptidoglycan and gram negative bacteria they have less. So the first component you already know. Gram positive, more peptidoglycan, gram negative, less. Second, lipid, gram positive they have less, and gram positive have more. So you can replace those numbers with less and more. And here's a new terminology right here. It's called ticoic acid, ticoic. Please add the word wall, W-A-L-L, -L, wall right here. Let me see if I can put it right here. Wall ticoic acid, W A L, wall ticoic acid, and lipoticoic acids. These are only present in gram positive bacteria. Okay? One more time. This ticoic acid, I'll show you the function of that later. It is only found in gram positive, absent in gram negative. Number four, okay, outer membrane. Oops, big typo, big, big typo. Outer membrane is absent. Holy macro. Absent in gram positive and present in gram negative. present in gram, negative. Correct it, please. All right. Now, what is the chemical composition of the outer membrane? I'll show you the diagram, and we are going to look at all these different parts. Lipopolysaccharide, lipoprotein, porin protein, and there's one more uh, that is missing. Uh, Lipopoly, what is that? Lipopolysaccharide, lipoproteins, porin proteins. There's one more. When I draw it, it will come to me. Okay. Yes? Oh, okay, okay. Let's look at the diagram so we can look at these structures. What are we talking about? Outer membrane. Outer membrane, all right. This is picture in your textbook on page number 
Sure, I'm going to show you. And yeah, all these things. Yeah. On page 85, please. 85. OK. All right. And then I'm going to draw my own, OK? This complicated diagram, then I'll draw a simplified version of my own, OK? Yeah. So here's gram-positive, first of all. Gram-positive bacteria, they have more peptidoglycan. Peptido from protein, OK? So these green chains that you see, green and blue, this is the peptido part right here. Peptido, right here, peptido. And glycan is what? Sugar sugar. You see these bars right here? And there are two colors, brown and pink, brown and pink, brown and pink. Okay? It's a disaccharide. Disaccharide, like sucrose is a disaccharide. Okay, maltose is a disaccharide. The sugar that is found in cell wall of bacteria is also a disaccharide. This dark one is called an acetyl glucosamine. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Beverly. <laughs> so this one I'm not going to ask you to memorize this. If you just remember NAG, just NAG. NAG good? NAG, NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG, NAM. Or disaccharide. Not even going to ask you those two names. Just for FYI, NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG. It's a disaccharide. Okay? One is, I'm going to draw. Okay? I'm going to draw my own. NAG is N acetyl glucose amine, NAG. The other one is called NAM, N acetyl muramic acid. Okay? So this is your sugar part, glycan part, and this is your protein part right here. Now look at this cell wall of gram positive. Okay. How many layers? Several layers, right? Of peptidoglycan. A whole lot of peptidoglycan in gram positive. Now look look at the gram negative cell wall. Look at them together. Who has more peptidoglycan? This is negative. Positive have more peptidoglycan, negative have only one layer right here. Okay. Now, other than peptidoglycan, gram-positive bacteria, they have what? Tecoic acid. What is tecoic acid? Tecoic acid is this rope, rope-like structures right here. Okay. Two types. Okay. One sticks out on the external surface, outside. This one that sticks out, outside the surface, is called wall tecoic acid, wall. And this one, the other one, which is called lipotechoic acid, is the one that anchors the peptidoglycan layers to the cell membrane, plasma membrane right here. It goes all the way to the bottom. Walticoic acid, as you can see right here, it stops right here. It's not the anchor. It's the lipotechoic acid. Let me draw my own simplified version before we go to gram negative. Okay. <coughs> This is your glycan sugar part. NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG, sugar part, glycan. Okay. And then you have your, you can draw little circles, you can draw a straight line, doesn't matter. This is your protein part right here. This is your peptido part. Peptido, right here. Or peptide, right? Chain. Peptide chain, protein chain. And this is your glycan. From here to here, right here, your peptido. Glycan. Glycan is made up of two NAM and MAG. So this is your simplified version of peptidoglycan. Or you can, as I said, you can just draw a squiggly line. doesn't matter. They just do like this. Like this. This is your peptidoglycan. 
second component <coughs> of before we uh, continue I'm going to draw this straight line on the bottom here this is our reference point this is our plasma membrane or cell membrane plasma membrane plasma membrane okay so you need to attach this peptidoglycan to the plasma membrane and what is that called which one Lipo. very good lipotechoic acid attaches it to the plasma membrane so this red color indicates lipotechoic acid lipotechoic acid okay <clears throat> how about the second tichoic acid which is called wall tichoic acid wall tichoic acid doesn't go all the way I have only drawn two layers you can draw two more okay it doesn't go all the way to the bottom it actually sticks out from the surface like this like that this is wall tichoic acid what do these ropes like structures do you think they do these rope like structures what is their purpose holding very good the primary support comes from protein the secondary support comes from tichoic acid so tichoic acid actually holds the different layers of peptidoglycan together additional firmness okay so if I just summarize this for you that gram positive cell wall G positive cell wall is made up of two things only two things and this is what you need to know for the test number one I will abbreviate it PG right peptidoglycan and number two TA tichoic acid that's it two types okay if you want to put in parentheses WTA and LTA right this is your tichoic that's your entire gram positive cell wall that's it number one and two TA is tichoic acid WTA is wall tichoic acid and LTA is lipotichoic acid that's it if you don't want to remember any of this diagram and just remember this you're in good shape that's gram positive cell wall before, okay now gram negative cell wall let's look at this diagram before I draw my own different layers of peptidoglycan together it provides additional support, support of peptidoglycan peptidoglycan now gram negative cell wall they have gram negative cell wall less peptidoglycan most of their cell wall is made up of what right here this this layer right here <coughs> called outer membrane and outer membrane is mostly lipid look at this this outer membrane doesn't it look like plasma membrane exactly that's what it is actually okay lipopolysaccharide okay now there are it's like a sandwich think of this outer membrane as a sandwich two pieces of bread okay what are those two pieces of bread phospholipid one on the top one on the bottom phospholipid you asked me about the porin protein here are the porin protein porin proteins are actually channeled the proteins okay that make the channels for the transportation of nutrients and other materials you see this right here pour P-O-R-E from pore. Porin proteins are for transportation of materials in and out of the cell. Porin protein. Okay. <clears throat> now, remember in gram positive, what's the anchor? What, a, what component attaches to the plasma membrane? Lipotechoic acid. Now here you have two layers that need to be attached to the plasma membrane. You have peptidoglycan and then you have outer membrane so the component the part that attaches these two layers to the plasma membrane is called lipo 
protein. Lipoprotein. You see these purple bars here? These are lipoproteins. Consider, think of them as if you have a club sandwich, you, you put a long toothpick around it, I mean in the middle to hold the layers, okay? That's what they are actually. Long toothpick-like structure that holds, that do what? Number one, they attach outer membrane to peptidoglycan. See right here? What is the function of lipoprotein? To attach outer membrane to the peptidoglycan. And then what? Peptidoglycan to plasma membrane. Peptidoglycan to plasma membrane. So there are attachment links between the two layers. One more time. Cell membrane, okay, outer membrane, sorry, outer membrane is attached to the peptidoglycan with the help of lipoprotein. And then lipoprotein also connects peptidoglycan to the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane, okay? Let me draw my own. And then I'll just summarize this like I did. Positive one. <clears throat> All right. So here is the plasma membrane right here. Okay. And then how many layers should I draw for peptidoglycan? Maybe one. Nam, nag, nam, nag, nam, nag. So that's your peptidoglycan. Nam, nag, and so on. Okay. So one layer of peptidoglycan, PG, PG, most of the pep, uh, cell, member, uh, cell wall of gram negative is this sandwich right here. One layer here and one layer here. What are these two layers? I'm going to abbreviate to save time. These two layers are phospholipid, phospholipid layers. This is called phospholipid bilayer, one on the top, one on the bottom. Phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer. Okay. Now, <clears throat> remember this whole thing right here is what? It's called what? Outer membrane, right? Outer membrane. And outer membrane is made up of four components, four parts. First part is this one right here, phospholipid bilayer. Second part, so those channels that help in the transportation of nutrients and other materials. There are channels or chunks of protein right here that make up the pore like this. See this opening right here? Pore. What do you think these proteins are called? Porin protein. Porin protein. So that's number two. Porin protein. Okay. So let's link the outer membrane to the peptidoglycan. This chunk of lipid and protein, lipoprotein right here, right? What is this called? Lipoprotein, lipoprotein. And the same thing is going to connect peptidoglycan to plasma membrane. So these red colors represents lipoprotein. Lipoprotein. That's number three. And number four, which is the most <clears throat> harmful part of this bacterium, are little hair-like projections on the surface outside right here. What do you call these hair-like projections in gram-positive bacteria? wall acid. wall acid. Remember this one right here? Okay, right here. wall acid. This one is called lipopolysaccharide. Number four, and the last one, <clears throat> the green. Four. 
lipo poly saccharide lipo poly saccharide what is it okay now if you do a chemical analysis and separate all these four different parts in peptidoglycan and take five mice and inject each part phospholipid bilayer in one mouse lipoprotein in another, and so on. Which, which mouse will die? The one that is injected with lipopolysaccharide. This is the toxic of the bacteria. Bacteria has other mechanism too, but this is one of the toxins, the part that makes the bacteria toxic. Okay. <clears throat> so let me summarize for gram-positive, gram-negative now. Gram-negative cell wall is also made up of two things only. Number one is what? PG. PG, just like gram-positive. PG. Okay. And what is the second one? Outer membrane. Outer membrane. That's it. Two things. Like gram-positive is made up of two things. Peptidoglycan and tichoic acid. Remember, gram-negative has no tichoic acid. Instead, it has outer membrane. And outer membrane is made up of four things, right? PL, phospholipid, lipoprotein, PP, and LPS. Okay, easy to abbreviate. What is PL? Phospholipid, and then flip it, LP, lipoprotein. PP, porine protein, and LPS, lipopolysaccharide. Okay? So that's what you need to know about the gram positive and gram negative. <coughs> so, gram negative cell wall, two things. Gram positive cell wall, two things. PG, and number two, TA. Yep. Yep. LP is lipoprotein. LP, lipoprotein. Yeah. <clears throat> so memorize the chemical composition. Don't worry about the diagram. Okay. Gram negative cell wall, gram positive cell wall. Now, <clears throat> let me tell you what happens when you put the bacteria in hypotonic solution, isotonic, and hypertonic. Three to four questions on that. La, la, la. Do you have anything like that here? Not. So. Should be. Let's see. Let's go back and see. Uh, okay. All right. La, 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 la. Diagram. We now let me draw, I, didn't, I should have to save time, but let's draw, okay. <clears throat> let's see what happens, okay, let's draw here. Three test tubes, one, two, three. First tube, we have hypotonic solution, hypo. Second one, we are going to keep it and third one, we are going to make it hypertonic. Hyper. Hyper. In each test tube, we are going to put two cell or cell structures, one with the cell wall and other without the cell wall. Garrett, give me an example of cell without cell wall. <laughs> cell wall. Mycoplasma, and what else? RBC, animal cells. Yep, good. All right. So in each cell, you're hypotonic. First of all, let's. What is isotonic solution to most living cells? 0.9 percent salt. 0.85 to 0.9 percent. So isotonic is 0.9 percent salt. That is isotonic to most living cells. <clears throat> so let's put 
bacterium in this cell in each test tube. This is the cell wall. Black color represents cell wall. And the green color represents cell membrane. First test tube, let's turn it to hypotonic. So how much salt should I put in here? Less or more? Less. Less? OK. So 0.5 percent, OK? 0.5 percent will make it hypo, hypo, OK? And here, hyper, OK? Let's say 5 percent, 5.0 percent salt. Hypertonic, OK? <clears throat> Hypotonic solutions, they are more, more solvent or more solute? More solvent. More solvent? Okay. More solute or more solvent? More water. More solvent. More solvent. Solvent. Water. <coughs> so hypotonic solution is a solution that has more water or solvent. More water slash solvent. And hyper, it has more solute. More salt could be sugar. OK, remember that, please. Solute. Now, remember the principle of osmosis, right? Only water moves. Salt doesn't move. Only water moves always from higher concentration to lower concentration. OK. So put one more cell. Oh, let's put mycoplasma here. Okay, so this is mycoplasma. And this is your, let's call this E. coli. Or staphylococcus. E. coli is better. It's rod shape. E. coli. So in each test tube, we have one E. coli and one mycoplasma. Hypotonic solution. All cells doesn't matter. They have cell wall or cell don't have cell wall. According to osmosis, water goes from higher concentration to lower concentration. The test tube has more water, so water is going to go in. Water is going to move in. Water is going to move in. Right? Let's see. Let's use the proper terminology. Open to what cell? This bacterium will, will rupture or no? Yeah. It's going to swell up. Its cell membrane will be pushed right next to the cell wall. But it will not rupture like that. And this is called plasmoptysis. This cell, plas, mop, just like a mop, it absorbs water. But have you seen a mop blow up? No. OK. Mop tises. Tises. So this is a term only applicable to those cells that have cell wall. Cells with cell wall, they gain water, but do not rupture. Plas mop tises. OK. One more time. Cells with cell wall, they gain water, but do not rupture. They maintain their shape. Okay, so this is the term we learned at the beginning of the cell wall prevents osmotic lysis. See, no lysis here. How about this one, mycoplasma? Any protection? No, no cell wall. What do you think is going to happen to this one? Rupture. rupture, and that ruptured cell is called what? 
ghost cell. Ghost cell. Ruptured cell. So cells without cell wall. Cells without cell wall, they become ghost cell in hypotonic solution because they, they become like ghosts. Boo. Okay, <laughs> really? That's why they are called ghost cells. Okay. Make sense? How about isotonic solution? Both cells will maintain the shape because the net gain and loss of water is same. So both will maintain shape. Okay. Hypertonic solution. Which one? It will shrink too? Cell wall prevents bacteria from osmotic collapse. So this is what this is how it's going to look like. The cell, which is rod shape, is going to still be rod shape. Remember, most of the cytoplasm is what? 90% is water. When you take the water away, okay, take the water out, the cell membrane will collapse, <laughs> not the wall. This is how it's going to look like. Empty. After losing water, the cell will be empty. And this is called what? Plasmolysis. Okay, what is plasmolysis? Plasmo from protoplasm. Plasmo from protoplasm is broken down. Lysis. Protoplasm broke down, lost water. It's not cytolysis. Is it cytolysis? No, cell didn't break down. Plasmolysis, cytoplasm broke down and lost water. But the cell is maintaining its shape. How about this one? Mycoplasma or cells without cell wall. They will shrivel like this. And that is called crenation. Very good. Crenation. Crenation. And this is what they tell you when you are stranded in the ocean. Do not drink salt water or you will die fast because this is what's going to happen to your intestinal cell. There will shrivel. Metabolic activity will stop and you will die faster. Okay. And this is what happens to your cell when you gargle with your... Um, salt water. This is what happens to your epithelial cells without cell wall. This is what happens to the streptococcus pyogenes. Shrivels, loses water, becomes metabolically inactive. Okay, So both cells are metabolically inactive, but are they dead? No. If I return the condition to isotonic, happy, 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 again, they become normal. Okay. Okay, a few exceptions about cell wall. Mycoplasmas, we already talked about mycoplasma, right? Mycoplasmas, they do not have cell wall. There's one bacteria, the very first bacteria that appeared on this planet called archaea bacteria, this one. They don't have peptidoglycan in their cell wall. They have other protein and sugar, but no NAMNAG and protein, so no peptidoglycan. Alliforms, okay, mycoplasma, mycoplasma is like this, mycoplasma, let's look at the DNA right here, it never had the gene to make the cell wall, but L form on the other hand, L form, these are the bacteria that do have the gene to make cell wall. But it is turned off. So these cells, L forms, they have the gene, but because of mutation, because of other chemical treatment, the cell wall gene is off. So in other words, they can be repaired. That's for the, um, the cell wall gene is off. Is for the this is L form, L form. Mycoplasmas, they never had, they never will. Okay, they never had gene. Mycoplasma. No gene. 
they will never have the cell wall. But this can be fixed. The mutation can be fixed and this bacteria one day may grow cell wall. That's the difference between L form and mycoplasmas. Any questions? Archaea bacteria are the very first bacteria on this planet. Okay? But the, the thing that you need to remember, they don't have peptidoglycan. No peptidoglycan. They have a cell wall. But cell wall is different from all other bacteria. Okay? No peptidoglycan, though. Protoplast and spheroplast. These are man-made structures. Protoplast, spheroplast is going to take me at least five to ten minutes to explain. So I'm not going to start that today protoplast and spheroplast. But uh, any questions? Anything you want me to repeat? We still have a few more minutes. Anything you want me to go over again? Today's lecture was intense. Yeah. Yes, lots of information. Yeah, yeah. So come to the review tomorrow, please. Okay. <laughs> come to the review. I know. LRC. LRC 230 to 330. Wednesday, Thursdays, I'm there. Okay, Wednesday, Thursday. Those of you who cannot come to um, Saturday review, come um, Monday. I mean Wednesday, Thursday in LRC in conference room. Okay, all right. So in LRC they have a conference room. When you go to LRC, you just tell them they will point you. Okay, two thirty to three thirty Wednesday and Thursday. Good day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.